Ann Wojcicki, good morning and welcome. Good morning, thanks for having me. You have got about a half a million genotyped customers. Mm -hmm. You want tens of millions of people genotyped. Mm -hmm. You did it yourself. How did it change your behavior and what did you learn? So one of the most important things I learned was that I'm higher risk for breast cancer and my mother has had breast cancer. So it really changed my behavior in the sense that I actually stopped drinking alcohol casually. And so for me, it was really empowering to actually get information where I felt like I can actually make lifestyle changes to decrease my risk. And it all comes from spitting in a cup. I remember Ann doing this two years ago. It's a mm -hmm. whole lot of spit. It, but you can get a lot of information, which mm -hmm. can be life-changing. Mm -hmm. But what do you say to people that say, sometimes too much information, I don't want to know, and just go with fate? Mm -hmm. So, so for, for everyone, it's, it's a personal choice for everybody. Mm -hmm. But I think that for all of us, we all want to live to be as healthy as, as possible. And so one of the goals that I have is to be, what I say, healthy at 100. Yeah. I don't want to be effectively managed at 100. I don't want to be you know, well-treated. Mm -hmm. I actually want to be healthy and what your genome does is actually a road map for you to understand what are the things that you could potentially do to be as healthy as possible mm -hmm. and it's doable being healthy to 100 isn't I totally believe yeah. in this world it's going to be healthy it's going to be possible for you to be healthy at 100 mm -hmm. what fascinates me is mm -hmm. the accumulation of the data and how yeah. much data you need uh, because with enough data you can change health care mm -hmm. Yes, I totally believe that. So I think, again, one of the things that if you think about every time you go into the grocery store or you go into a Walmart or Target, they're collecting data on you. So you walk in and they can effectively target you. So there's a story that came out about the 17-year-old girl who was identified as being pregnant. And that's exactly what we want to do. We want you to go to the doctor's office and have them say, Charlie, you're three years away from being diabetic based on all these behaviors. Exactly. And, and what's the tipping point in terms of how much data you need? I mean, you hope to have with 23andMe, at least a million people by the end of 2013. Yeah, so a million people walking around with their genomes, I believe is disruptive to the healthcare system. I think you're gonna have people walking to their physician's offices, knowing information about their genome, and I think that is gonna be the catalyst to really start to get people thinking about prevention and getting genetics into the mainstream of healthcare. And when you go from one million to 25 million, it just gets increasingly it just, yeah. what you can do. Yeah, and I think it's, again, more and more information. The goal of having more and more information is really to better be able to predict what is your health outcome going to be. And I think it's a frustrating experience for everyone when they walk to the doctor's office and they say, hey, try this, and it may work. And my goal is to say, I don't want to walk in and say, try this, it may work. I want to know, yes. is this going to work or is it not going to work? And even the name of the company, 23andMe, from mm -hmm. my biology chemistry class, comes from the 23 chromosomes that we have that make us up. Mm -hmm. But what is the reaction from the doctors to this? Because I've heard mixed things from the doctors. I think it's, an, it's anytime there's a new technology for physicians, I think it's, it's, it's a challenge. And one of the things Things that we did we recently just partnered with Udacity and we actually created a course about ge genetics so that anyone can learn about and I think more and more we're going to be doing education programs because we need everyone in, in society to get educated about genetics and what does that mean what does a genetic risk actually mean mm -hmm. I want to ask you about because there was a story that mm -hmm. caught my eye in the Wall Street Journal mm -hmm. last month your company was awarded a patent mm -hmm. for gamete donor selection mm -hmm. which leads to the question about uh, designer babies in yeah. the future that you could have a drop-down menu at fertility clinics mm -hmm. Um, where you could choose eye color, you could choose hair color. Are you going to be, and do you think that's the future of fertility clinics and that type of having babies in the future? I think the reason why we put that out is it's, it's one of the common questions that people ask. Is they'll say, I see your blue eyes. If your partner has blue eyes, are your children going to have blue eyes? And so, again, one of our goals is to really get people to understand what does that mean? We all hear things like, oh, you know, my mother's father was bald, therefore my children might be bald. Those are sort of these old wives' tales. And what we want to do is really bring that credibility about really understanding how genetics gets passed down to the next generation. But I don't think mm -hmm. people understand, and that's why you're such on the cutting edge, that you can take an embryo now and take several cells out of it, and you can mm -hmm. tell not only the gender of the baby, but you can tell hair color, eye color. We can tell a lot. All of those things are going to be probability. So hair color, eye color, yes. Like when I had my child, I knew for certain, that, like, yes, my child's going to have brown eyes. Mm -hmm. And so I think that is definitely the direction we're going. And I think for some of these diseases, it's definitely incredibly helpful for people to be able to just know, go into a pregnancy knowing, saying, yes, my child is likely to have this condition, and at least to be an aware and informed parent. Mm -hmm. All right, Ann Wojcicki, can I just ask you, do you feel as good as you look? 
<laughs> I actually feel I feel great. I've been, um, you know, it's 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 feels as good as you look. I feel, uh, you know, it's it's been it's been uh, an interesting six months or so, but it's yeah. uh, I feel really good. All right. Yeah. Thank well, you we so love much. the most daring CEO in America. Yeah, That's a great I'm, title, right? We're out to do some yes. more. Here yeah. is the most daring CEO, yeah. looking love like it. a badass on the cover. <laughs> and we're just congratulations. Thank you. Good to see you. Good to see you too.